In this video, we'll continue with our point of sale system in JavaScript, and this is part 10. So we have now a lot of items already fixed, and we're working right now on the checkout, and we're still working on this calculator. So what we're going to do here, before we continue on with these uh, dom dom uh, domination buttons, which is very useful as well, we're going to have the exact amount. I guess that one should be here just above. And what is the exact amount? It's basically matched with the number here. So we're going to grab the exact amount here. So for example, if we click on this, we see this total here, and we click on checkout, we see this amount here. This amount, when we go in here, should be basically in here as an exact amount. All right, so to do this, what we're going to work on is, first of all, we have to put it in a, uh, in, the, in this model, in this calculator model, we need to put a button. So let me just, double check what is the place here where we're going to put it it's somewhere here and probably if we have this one which would be here the on click in here in this specific model which would be the calculator screen amount input or that's this one here but in there in that specific model we're going to work with so if I'm going to click here on control F search for that specific area all right that is not what I want I want to find the uh, div where it is located that's it. So you can see here after searching, we have the ID. That's the calculator screen amount. So I assume you have the same name as well. This is the model, basically the amount calculator. So we grab this here. And then if we're going down here, what we could do here is to add a button. But this button should be a complete button here that would have a full width just below here between these two. So what I will do here. Very simple is I can just copy one of these items here. We just say another model, or maybe we don't even have to copy it. We just say here a new button. I'll copy this, put that in here, and then all this proper indentations. Then I'm not sure if this button will have complete uh, proper padding, so we have to see that because we see here the row. However, I'm just going to say this one will be column 12, round the tail. This will be warning. We can give it maybe another color here. Uh, uh, maybe yellow as well. Well, the yellow is fine here, warning. But then we say here the name, exact amount. Exact amount. So if I save this right now, go back here. Let's see if we have that working. We have an exact amount. All right. That looks beautiful. What we want to do with the exact amount is eventually when we click on this, we should see here the amount appear, the full amount here that it is that what the customer paid. So the exact amount is of course uh, retrieved from here. So we need to first have something here. So if we select something, we go in here, then we would need to know what is the amount ID here. So I'm going to just search for this ID name, which would be here the input value. You can see here the input type is a number and the input ID name would be amount. So we're going to grab this amount here. And what I will do here is we could show this amount in here as well. Uh, let's see how will we going, how are we going to do this? First of all, we're going to say on click. And this should be here matched with this item here. I guess we need to have a separate function for that. That would make the most sense. So if I'm going to check here and I probably have to go down here on this one here. This is the insert calculator. All right. What we're going to do is we need to have probably another function and this function will say the exact amount. So I'm going to use this one here and I'm just thinking should I, should I have an exact amount here that might create another, well in this case it's fine. I will accept that one. It will say exact amount because I'm thinking that maybe it will create confusion. It should it be included in here. But in this case, I'll accept that. So I say exact amount button. And then the exact amount button will eventually be a value. And this value will be eventually the amount here. So, I'll, so what will be the amount here in this value? Well, we have that one here. Then we can say here, because we have this item here, we'll say the calculate screen value equals the exact well equal this specific value here. So we have this semicolon here. 
we can save it but we're not done yet because we need to have this on click so we're going to look for here the exact amount button and then i'm going to look for the exact amount we go up here where are we in the model let's search for the exact amount so there's this button here we say here on click and the on click will be um this and what will be this this needs to be i need to really consider now how are we going to connect these numbers here what is the value in here do we really need this item i guess i want to make it a parameter but probably it would be more logical instead of a parameter just to grab the id value here and in incorporate it into the function itself instead of putting here the numbers all right so what we're going to do is we're going to keep this one like that and we click on this then we go down here back to this function where i say value in this case i'll say value there is no value it doesn't exist why it doesn't exist we're going to grab this value here so we say here um we need to grab this amount here so i need to know how is this really done we have this one here we have the amount we have this id i can get the id here but i assume that we probably have it also somewhere else but it doesn't matter for now so i say here i'm going to grab here the constant and later on i need to double check if that amount is somewhere else as well so we can refactor it a little bit better so we say constant here amount and then we say here um amount there's an equal say document dot get element by id and this id name will eventually be amount which makes sense and then we say here amount equals amount and i need to make sure that the amount here is the dot value so let's double check here just to be sure do we have it anywhere else that i should know about because i'm not certain in it so far we have here the amount 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 all right i'm just searching through it as you can see here now we get a lot of items here the exact amount uh get element by id price that's this one here i realize that here we didn't use const anywhere so probably we will not have an issue so we're going to save this and then just refresh so now i'm going here to the checkout what I need to do is before I even do the checkout, I need to make sure I select something. Then we go here. All right, so we grab this. And then if I press on this, there you are. So now you can see we grab this number here. I realized maybe we should also have here the exact amount so we still remember what is the total amount. You can imagine as a cashier, if you're always working with the numbers, you might forget how much the customer needs to pay. If the customer asks how much I need to pay again, you still have here the exact amount. So that's what we should do as well. So what I'm going to do here is this. And what I want to do as well is in here, the inner item. So what can we do here for the text? Well, I have to see later on. I'll, I'll work on it later on. But what I want to do then, because I need to just really consider what is the item here. I'm going to put it here brackets. Let's get these brackets in there first. Um, exact amount put in here and then later on i have to see here enter the amount all right so this must be the amount x.00 i just put in that that for so far so what we're going to do now is once we have this here we have that you can see this here this one works so we have this as well before we even continue on with this there is something that we need to protect and what i need to protect here is basically we want to avoid you can see here even if we cancel this here this works nicely but what we want to avoid is if we pay to less let's say like this and then we say you confirm we should not have a confirmation here until we have the exact amount in here if i click on this you can see it overrules it we have the exact amount in here or we have something more that makes sense because imagine you were going to put only two dollars in here but the item was five dollars we get an issue and then we, if we confirm that that should not be confirmed we're not allowed to confirm so this should be disabled until the exact amount has been matched so that's what we're going to do here we're just going to add up a quick function in here at the bottom which would be eventually match with the uh 
confirm button here and basically this would be uh, we can call the confirmation or the confirm paid function so I say this confirm paid button and basically what this really does is it just checks if the amount that we are having will be equal to that so I realize here maybe this here we have this amount I'm just going to change that I'm going to grab this one put it in here and the reason I'm doing that is so we don't have this constant here because I noticed that this one I'll be using here as well and this will be a problem if we have another constant with the same name so I'm just going to do like this this is easier is it the best way to be honest no of course it's not we need to refactor it but for now I want the more working model so we're going to grab this here and what I really want to do here is basically this I'm going to get this button let's get this uh, this would be the function but this will be also the uh, button that we can check on so I'm going to just comment out this for now I'm going to search for this specific button which will be our ID name as well or at least the confirm button in our model so in our model we're going to search here this specific item and here we're going to say ID ID say confirm paid all right so we have this button here and what I want to do here is the confirm paid is basically this this is by default should be disabled so I say it is able and then what I will do here is the following we're going to look for here in this function and this function will be triggered basically when we always update here the numbers so it will recognize the moment we are surpassing the amount of numbers at that moment it should be triggered and I guess this one could be triggered then at the same time as well as one or the others that will trigger this specific function so what I'm going to say here um, we're going to say here document dot get element and this have to think as well we have the confirm paid item here and then this will be set to disable equals false all right so we're going to disable this if and only if if this specific calculated screen amount which is basically this one in here if this would be higher than the equal or higher than the exact amount if that is the case we should enable the button if it's not the case we must this we need to maintain disabling this button so let's start to do this right now so we have this confirm button confirm paid we have this here we have this uh, set on disabled but there will be only an if statement so if um, what we will say here this value here the calculator dot value amount is um, larger or equal to and then we need to get the exact amount uh, let's see where did I put the exact amount here which would be this one here exact amount value remember this was the total amount that the customer needed to pay so basically how much did the customer pay we put it in the calculator should be bigger than the amount or should be bigger or equal to the paid amount here so if that is the case we want to disable the item here that makes sense else we do nothing so there's no other movement here so we have this here but of course this will not be triggered until we're going to put in this function in here so you can see here in the insert copy as we press on it it will work so let me first save this and then afterwards we're going to add this function in here so I can show you so you have understanding and then what we're going to do here is basically this and we're almost done here so we click on this and then what we want to do here is in the checkout you can see here this that if I press you can see here now the button is disabled if I say here 3.00 doesn't work so if I remove this I say 3.99 all right so it doesn't work here as well and if I do the exact amount it doesn't work why it doesn't work we didn't trigger yet we didn't connect that one. so now we're going to connect it I'm going to say the confirm button will be triggered on this here uh, we have this confirm button so that this function will be set here and then if we select the exact amount I want to also confirm the 
update button or trigger that it will be enabled. And then what I will do here, I realize that we should do it here as well. We have this here. Because when we undo it, what we should do here is this. We can always we will set this by default on disable. Uh, we set this on disable as true. And the reason I'm doing this is imagine that we we change it. We want to cancel the numbers. Then we want to make sure that we don't get any issue here. Maybe because maybe you put in a wrong number, you need to reset it, and then it would be basically triggered here. So what we will always do is here is we will just undo it or basically set it back to default on disable true. All right, save this, refresh, and let's look now. So I want to make sure you understand this carefully. Click on this. So I press here seven dollars. You can see here now we can confirm this. And of course, here nothing happens because we didn't do any connection with the database. So we, uh, that's not important for now. However, if I cancel this, you can see now this is nothing here. Confirm button has been removed or disabled again. Put an exact amount, it is confirmed again. Cancel. If I say here 0 0.11, it is not matching it. If I say 3.11, it doesn't match. If I do this again, it's 399. If I say 4, once it's recognized four dollars, it recognizes the amount and then it allows confirmation here. Beautiful. So now we have a very important part done. The last part next video will be this domination here, which will basically be an add-on consistently to speed up your your payments or to, to for register. It will be in the next video.